What's going on guys, this is Tyler back again with another video. We're gonna do another PSA mail day. 106 card order just came in the mail. This was another rapid delivery by PSA. These cards, again, 106 card value order, $19 per card, arrived at PSA's doorsteps December 20th, 21st, logged December 22nd. Here we are January 13th, FedEx dropped them off to my place one or two days ago and now we're doing a reveal. So um, beautiful turnaround time. Obviously they're cranking stuff out right before their sports uh, special for $15. Perhaps they're anticipating a lot of volume. So gonna jump into it. Great order, 64% gym rate, lots of different sports, uh, ultra modern, and then you know some 90s, early 2000s stuff. So without further ado, let's go into it. Make sure that everything is nice and clear. Perfect. First up, 95 Collector's Choice International European Gold Signature of Michael Jordan. There's only like nine of those in the pop. Didn't even know it was a Euro card whenever I bought it. Um, just kind of saw it was gold signature. Top's Finest. This is probably the one of the lone outliers in the order. So we're going to have to look at this and see. Anytime you get a PSA 4 back, likely a crease. Card did have great centering. So we're going to have to take a look and see if there's something. There's a corner issue, not enough to warrant a four. Uh, maybe that's what they're looking at right there. It's a surface dent on the back. Man, that is rough for a four. Unless they're saying it goes all the way through. It's possible. So PSA four on my Kobe. Unfortunate. This is a very interesting card. So first year ever inaugural release Bowman Chrome, which that should carry some weight. Obviously, Bowman Chrome is the prospecting um, product in baseball. Uh, carries significant weight. Unfortunately, 1997 Bowman Chrome is not highly collected as it relates to inaugural releases. So you would think that a card like this would garner a lot more attention um, given you know, how, how important the set is. This is a PSA 9 King Griffey Jr. Refractor. I'm very surprised this came back a 9. It did have surface scratches on it, which is very rare for 90s and 2000s cards, which means the owner did not take care of it. I say all this to say there's no PSA 10 in the pop report, assuming that I looked correctly. PSA 9 is the highest pop. There's a lot of those in the PSA 9 grade, but there are no PSA 10s. Um, but still not very highly collected. I just don't, uh, that I don't get. 97 Finest MJ. Got some 10s. Tins on some MJs. So the, the grades in the beginning are going to be a little rough because we're looking at 90s, early 2000s cards. Um, and that's okay. Nine, nines for these types of cards are okay. That's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Diamond Cuts Flare Showcase. Uh, di I, I love this set. This is really cool. Missed out on a couple Griffies recently, but I did get this Jeter. It's probably like a $60, $65 card. Peyton Manning. So this is a card that I bought in the summer. Probably gonna lose maybe 10 20 bucks on it in a psa 9 grade because these were going a little bit higher and the market's dropped on stuff like this since then it's been like six months so um didn't get a chance to get this card sent in earlier i just sat on a bunch of stuff mj back-to-back -back psa 8 uh this one is a little bit off center left to right and maybe top to bottom so that's probably where this one got got but surface on it's very clean again most of the cards from the 90s and 2000s all clean surfaces Tops knew what they were doing whenever it came to selecting vendors that knew how to print cards. Not the case anymore with Pupini and Tops. Uh, have no idea how to print cards. Coast to Coast Refractor PSA 9. Again, tens, big premium, nines, you know, break even, lose a little bit of money um, compared to what the raw price is, especially after fees. This one was a little bit of a head scratcher. SP Authentic PSA 8, unless we're looking at a massively off centered card somehow, which I don't think it is. This one, uh, two dots on the on the back, so maybe they really, really hammered it for the two little dot specs. Sometimes they overlook that, and sometimes they don't. Like this card, for example, has a dot on it. I knew that whenever I submitted it. Um, has a s spot on the surface, and then on the back, this is a cool PSA 9 MJ, though. But the back of the card does have a surface dot. Maybe it was the front. I remember seeing it. Maybe it is that little spot there. So... Kind of a little, maybe a little inconsistent, but that stuff is going to get caught whether it's an 8 or a 9. It kind of doesn't really matter. PSA 9, LeBron, the Kang flight team. Kang. He is now signing autographs, apparently for Fanatics and presumably Tops cards. So that was big news. Um, that's probably going to be 
I don't know why they have this in a plastic sleeve. This card came like this. I don't know if they're trying to protect it. I don't know what the deal is. But this is the first card I've ever had that has come back like this. I don't know what that means. Ooh, we got a perfectly sealed. <laughs> that's cool. Is that, is that how they always are? Like, that's cool. Maybe they just forgot to take take off the, the plastic. <laughs> All right. PSA 9, Upper Deck Glass, Superlative Swatches. This, I have another Jordan uh, game used in here. They both looked really good. Both looked like they had really good shots at getting PSA 10s. Um, they were very, very clean. Um, so I was hoping to get 10s on one of those, but got 9s on both. This is another one that I was hoping to get a 10 on. And I think I looked at the pop on this and the pop is either really low or, or non-existent. So um, this was a purchase. The seller said that he had it since 2005 whenever he pulled it from a pack, which is always a good sign. There's a chance that it hasn't traded a lot of hands, seen a lot of graders' hands. Still came back at PSA 9, so probably going to be a break-even type card, but still, okay. This is a cool one. Again, I, some of these grades I don't really care about. Uh, PSA 7, but this is a cool card. Kobe Bowman Elevation. This is a, a one, maybe a two-year brand in the mid-2000s. Um, Bowman was trying to experiment a little bit with different types of things outside of the Bowman Rookies and Stars brand, which was the flagship Bowman and Chrome product for Bowman Chrome. So they were going, to, they did this, they did a couple other ones, I think Bowman Signature Edition or something like that. This is a cool one though. It's not really a Chrome card, it's a foil, kind of like Bowman Platinum before Bowman Platinum, but a dual patch blue. This is game use too. This is not, you know, not, not fake stuff. Numbered one of four. Really cool. And again, back then, if you're getting a, a dual patch or a patch card of a guy like this, it's usually numbered to 25. You can get anything less than five. That's crazy, crazy good. Um, usually the patches were going to be coming from Upper Deck. You know, Kobe was a Upper Deck guy for the longest time. Then he fell off of, um, I mean, they allowed him to do memorabilia for tops. And so it's, it's a rare memorabilia card for tops. Um, he did have some like tops luxury boxes like the late 2000s and then Panini took over and of course he was a Pupini guy for, for life. Uh, last one and this is a big one. I think that they mislabeled this. Uh, and I may have mislabeled it whenever I submitted it on the submission form. Upper Deck Reserve Flight Team Gold. So I don't think this is Upper Deck Reserve. I think this is regular Upper Deck. Uh, it does have the gold lettering which I think all the regular ones do have the gold lettering. Um, really sweet card. So I think this is the second one of these that I have. The other one I think is labeled correctly. I think I have it listed on eBay as, and mentioning it as being mislabeled. I think that I'm the one who's probably confused in submitting these more than likely because there, there is a couple of different versions of this card. But I now have two of them PSA 10 grade. The label up here is probably going to be look different on both of them. But those are really cool. I do actually have the flight team reserve gold that I'm getting ready to submit to PSA though. Those, those will be going to PSA here shortly. Really cool card. All right, move that stack out of the way. Fleer, MJ Missing Lynx jersey, PSA 9. Really thought that one had a shot at getting a 10. Um, got this card from a, a seller who I've gotten a couple MJ cards from. They've all been clean, so really happy with that. This is a cool one. A quad jersey, number 99, from the Kang. Again, I was just on a memorabilia kick for some reason, just buying a lot of memorabilia cards. Kind of didn't really care about the grade. Obviously, I was vetting the grade. Um, knew that this one had a little bit of corner dings on the back. It's okay. All right, this is probably one of the lowest cards. First, This may be one of the first 7.5s I've ever gotten from PSA. It's a rare grade that they give out. PSA 9, Star Quest Cyan. Uh, Cyan is a, uh, one of the more rare, at least on the rarer side. It's not the base card, so it's a Cyan one. This is a really cool one. King of the Court, This is the population on this is less than 10 to 15, something like that. So inaugural Panini release, Crown Royal. So 2009, first year Pupini took over. Uh, not a lot of cards printed. Uh, they weren't sure how this was going to be fared. And, you know, it's an insert. I don't know if it's a case hit. I can't really re recall. Just basic Pupini stuff. But back then they actually cut cards pretty clean. So I like the early Pupini stuff, especially as it relates to like the... Kobe's and the Kangs. Magic Johnson, Kobe passing the torch duel. Gold number 50, unfortunately, does not have autographs on it. Because whenever this insert set, which is a classic iconic insert set going back to the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, I believe it came initially with dual autographs. Um, now they're just kind of whoring out the name of it. 
This is one Shohei I'm probably going to lose a little bit of money on. I bought this during the summer whenever he was in his peak, and this is one of the first Japanese version cards that I actually went after. 2013 Bandai. 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 Maybe saying that right. Bandai. Shohei Otani Owner's League number two. Uh, Kind of cool. But got a nine on it, so I paid a little over three hundred. I think those are going for less than two hundred now. So, uh, yeah, got two of the um, cards from Japan. This is a 2015 BBM, so I sent both of them off. Uh, it came back an eight. I'm okay with that. Um, not going to do well on those. PSA nine, Travis Kelsey, Prism rookie. This one is probably going to make a uh, maybe ten, fifteen dollars on after fees. This is a PSA 8 Prominence. These cards are thicker. Um, I think this is a more high-end product in 2013. Maybe a one-and-done or two-and-done. I can't remember really this product. I don't think it's really highly collected, but um, it is a, a thicker card. Thought I did not think that would come back an 8. I thought that it actually looked really, really clean, so I have to look a little bit further. Maybe I missed something. Tops PSA 10. Of course, there's going to be a lot of people that collect that. Travis Kelsey, it's kind of funny on his podcast, he said that he hates the image of this card and that he would never sign this card. He said that recently this past week um, when uh, somebody asked him about this card. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, he doesn't like his rookie card. So I wonder how many other people are like that. Nikola Jokic uh, just sold this card this morning. So anybody who is interested in any cards from this order or the previous video... Um, feel free to scan the QR code. It should take you to my eBay page where all these cards are available if they haven't already been sold. Um, just sold this one this morning, so got to get this thing shipped out overnight. Here's a nice one. And I don't think that there's any PSA 10s on this either. Maybe there's you know less than 10, so it's very difficult. Actually, there's PSA 10s. I think it's just hard to get. Uh, Panini Revolution Nova PSA 9. And even a nine is going to have a really good premium on this type of card. So I thought that this had an outside shot at getting bumped up. But uh, the Revolutions, I didn't do so hot on with this release. Some of you are thinking, Tyler, how in the world did you get a 64% gem rate? I haven't seen a lot of gems. Well, you know, it picks up a little bit later on, fortunately, with Otani. Uh, New Wave PSA 8.5. Um, so missed, missed something there. Did send off four of these in this order. PSA 9, and I sent like seven or eight of these in December, so I split them between two orders just so I didn't get crushed. The, these are getting crushed. The other one I went two for three on, so um, these are one, one for four with one grader, two for three on another. Obviously, they're different cards. They're going to look different, but you know, I didn't think that they looked that drastically different, but you know, that's grading variability. Next, PSA 10 Tops Chrome Tom Brady Refractor. Those, card, those have gone down in value quite considerably so this is my first altered <laughs> Mahomes and I sent this in because if you look at the card this is really annoying the back of this card looks like this and this was approved through eBay's authentication program I got this card and eBay's authentication program the good great folks down in you know at CGC approve this because they're the ones who are approving all the raw cards they approve this i don't even know what's going on with the back of the card i have no clue <laughs> they approved it so i paid i don't even know 250 300 for a raw patty and i was like you know what let's just aim for the lowest graded optic let's send it in and see if we can get a pop one psa one maybe there is a pop one psa one out there but they gave it an altered score so i can't even get that i can't even get the lowest pop um, it's really, really, really annoying that they approve this. So now I don't, you know, it's a $300 card. I don't know what really to do with it. The surface looks like it's got, I <laughs> don't even want to say what that looks like. And then the back of the card just mangled. I don't even know how they describe that as being altered. I don't know what somebody did to this. It looks like it was left out in an oven for, and baked for like 30 minutes. So I have no idea what's up with that card. Kind of stinks. So we're going to figure out what to do with it. Maybe I can... I don't know. Get it graded as uh, authentic, maybe? I have no clue. All right, next two are pretty cool. Um, Travis, Kel he, Travis Kelsey doesn't have a lot of graded stuff out there aside from his rookies, so I thought it would be pretty interesting to go and grade some of his non-rookie stuff. Uh, first time kind of venturing out into that. Uh, AKA, love that set. Love the Mahomes from this set. So I went ahead and got the Kelseys. 
This is a PSA 10 Zeus, number to 149. And then, of course, the matching color, the red, number to 99. So those are really nice. Now we're starting to pick up the gem rates here just a little, especially with some good ones coming up. So Freshman Flash Green Refractor, number to 99. Um, hopefully Judge has a nice bounce back here. Finally, finally, finally got one of these to pop. HMT Refractor, HMT 50 Refractor, number to 250. These have a, a heritage going with them, so the refractors from update number to 250, the X Fractors number to 99. I'm glad that they have not messed with that. Please don't mess with that. They have unfortunately added more parallels, which I think is a little unfortunate. This is one I'm going to have to look a little bit closer on. There are roughly 30, 40 of these graded, and only two of them have gotten PSA 7s. You're looking at one of them. So whether this is something that I'm going to be able to crack and resub. I don't know if there's something going on down here. Maybe that's what they're looking at. There's something going on down there. So I have to look and see. But this is one of the lowest pops. So it is a Shohei number 250, but you know, didn't do so hot on that. Then the artist proof version got a PSA 9. Eh. But we're going to pick it up here. So Heritage Gallery PSA 10. Heritage Gallery PSA 9. This is where we really ramp up. We're about to see a string of 10s. All right. Gypsy Queen missing backplate PSA 10. Gypsy Queen backplate PSA 10. Ooh, Gypsy Queen backplate PSA 10. Those are these are all about I think 200 pop. Gypsy Queen PSA 10. Now we've got the deck edges. So Heritage deck edge. Those are about 200 a piece too. Deck edge and deck edge. Now we've got another string of cards. So this is the last one, but I've got two, two, two other boxes to go through, so I need to go get those. But we're going to have another string of this type of card. So I submitted some that looked like PSA 9s and PSA 10s, so we're going to get a, a variety of both. So this one, first one's PSA 9. Now let's move these out of the way and then grab our other box. And then get these guys out and ready. Okay, set that aside. So there is going to be a couple cards in here where, again, it's kind of the same card. I submitted like 25 of them, so I'll go through those really quick. But also these as well. I want to go through these quick. All right, so PSA 10 on this one. Love these Otani Ruth uh, Top Snell cards. Very highly collected due to the comparisons, obviously, between the two. PSA 10. So I went 9, 10, 10, 10. Nine. Nine. Nine, 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 nine. PSA 10. PSA 10. PSA 10. And then now we're switching it up. We're still in the tops now category. Still 2018. Still Tony. Now we're adding in Ronald Acuna Jr. I got this because both of them got MVPs last year, which I thought was really fascinating. So we got a 2018. These are the rookie of the years. And now in 2022 20, or 2023, whatever year we're in, um, MVPs five years later. I think they may be the first rookie of the year duel and then also the first ones to get MVP all in the same year. I'm almost positive that that may be a fact. I thought that I heard that somewhere. So that one's really cool. So I was getting that to kind of capitalize on both of both of their hypes. So that's why I got that. They're still kind of difficult to find. I'm so glad this one came back at 10. Ooh, the nine would have hurt. This one is the Babe Ruth Otani. Different card. This is 18W. Um, what is this? The Moments uh, of the Week gold winner. So this is one of the gold ones where that, that little badge up there is gold, not silver. Eh. Um, big whoop. So it is a parallel, but it's a, a really nice one, and that, that one helps. All right. Now, I love these cards that we're about to go through here. So these are the Topps Dynamic Duels. I, this is a cool set. Great concept from Topps. I'm not really a big fan of the on-demand stuff too, too much, but I think they did this one well. I think they do some of the on-demand stuff very well, especially if it's good rookie class. I just like, I don't know, if it's a good rookie class, some of the throwback design, some of the creativity. I think they do, do a good job with that. So I wasn't a fan initially, but this has grown on me, admittedly, um, especially with some of these classic combinations whenever we're looking back six years ago um so in 2018 if you look at some of my videos i, would ne I was never buying any of this stuff i was buying you know the classic stuff that you would normally get but now some of this stuff is still kind of cool to have 
All right, Acuna and Soto. Why is it, why do I like this card? I like it because there's not many combination Acuna Sotos. Given that they were prospected basically at the same time, same hype, you know, which one's going to be better, the constant comparisons. Um, kind of like uh, Chris Bryant, Carlos Correa in 2015. Um, I think that th- this is still kind of a neat card. One one year, Soto's an MVP. Next year, Acuna's an MVP. So I think it's a, a really neat card, and that's why I have it in here. Got two of them, so both of those PSA 10. If I'm not mistaken, these dynamic duels are are SP'd. The sets are, were SP'd to 700. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I think I, that I have that correct. Next, uh, so how did I get all of these? I got all these from the same seller who was selling two sets, complete sets, boxes that they opened up. And of course, the boxes come with the autographs. They also come with the inserts. So a lot of these cards came from that same seller. And I'm very glad that I got them because, you know, this is, these were basically three freebies throw in. So I did not buy this card. This was just a freebie. Um, there's a market for this for Phillies fans. So Reese Hoskins, uh, Harrison Bader. Um, I'm assuming, I don't know where Harrison Bader's at now, because I don't know if he's with the Cardinals or not, but Phillies fans of Reese Hoskins, maybe. And then it seems like Ricky Henderson's market is really picking up as well. So, um, there's a lot of Ricky fans. He's kind of in that Bo Jackson, you know, Ricky Henderson category of, you know, you know, it was Griffey only, Jeter, Bonds, McGuire, um, a rod, and now it's it seems as though the steroid era is kind of like all right, those cars aren't all that great, other than you know the ones who didn't do steroids, like the Griffey Jeter's market's kind of moved it a little bit because a lot of the big Jeter collectors are moving out of the, out of the collector space. Seems like Bo Jackson and Ricky Henderson have really picked up in terms of collectability and in terms of desirability from collectors. So I don't know what's going on there, but so I'm like, okay, well, let's feed the market some PSA 10 Jim Mint cards. So got two of those. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to move any of these things, but I just wanted to get them because I thought there may be some collectability out there. Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin, Braves fans, I feel like may like that. I don't know how many of those dual combos out there in PSA 10 grade for the PSA 10 collectors. Again, going on Ricky. This one's kind of cool. Ricky Henderson, Jose Canseco. Um, there are Jose Canseco collectors out there. I think Ricky may be taking over a little bit. Oh, Ricky boy. Five out of 10. This is the red. Five out of 10. Again, all freebies, so zero cost basis. This was a massive card, in my opinion, that was thrown in. And I overlooked this card. I didn't even know it was in there. I didn't know how how rare it really was. Why is this important? So 2018, Juan Soto rookie year, obviously. So rookie. Obviously, he's t- he was teammates with Bryce Harper for one or two years. When, I forget whenever he went to Philly. So maybe three years. These dominant duos, the dominant duos is an insert set. So the regular dynamic duels numbered uh, is numbered SP to 700. I think each box set may have got one of these out of this set, which was number 70, for which I think there's 10 cards in the set. I'm pure speculation. You know, I'm really winging that. So there's only 70 of these, which means there's not that there's only 70. These things do not surface or come to uh, come up that often. In addition to that, I know that Soto and Harper didn't win together. I think it's really cool that both of them came up and were on the same team. Kind of like A-Rod and Griffey. Um, They were on the Mariners at one point. So they share that, you know, a little bit. So if you're a Nationals collector and it sucks you don't have either one of them, I'm sorry. That's unfortunate. Maybe Yankee fans will like this because eventually they may, both Harper and him may be on the same team. I don't know. But I think this is really, it's just cool. I th- stuff like this to me is cool, but it's SP to 70. I just think those unique combinations are so neat. So that one, rare, very low pop since there's 70 of them. And then kind of the same thing with Kershaw and Walker Bueller. Obviously, this is going to be more dependent on Walker, Walker Bueller, you know, kind of bouncing back and being a competent number two or number three. He may not even be in the starting rotation because we got Kershaw, we got Otani. Of course, Otani's not going to pitch next year. Then Yamamoto, and then after that, we got Roki. It's Roki time. So Walker may be out of a job, at least in L.A. All right, Ricky Henderson and Mark McGuire. So, again, more Rickies. Red Sox fans. I don't know how many combos are out there like this. I think this is kind of a rare combination. That first year, they did a really good job getting some cool combinations. Um, again, I think the PSA 10s are going to go really, really well. All right, these next batches, I'm going to go through quick because they're all the same card, basically, and very few nines. So 10, uh, it's funny. I, the PSA 9s that I had for my last batch, I sent in like 50 of these. I sold all my PSA 9s to one seller earlier this morning. So PSA 10. 
uh, for like 25 bucks, uh, basically paying five, six dollars a card, $19 grading fee. So the PSA 9s break even, PSA 10s are gravy. That's how that works. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting rich doing this, but if you can move the PSA 10s and, you know, make 20, 20 bucks a pop, I'll do that. That's, you know, right now it's a value meal at McDonald's, 20 bucks. Inflation. Uh, PSA 10. I think this one I did a lot better than the last order of these. Again, I just broke them up. Just I submitted every single one of them. I didn't even vet them. Um, these cards, for the most part, come very clean as long as you look at the corners and edges. The surface on these, it's base tops. I don't think anybody's really fudging around with these. They're probably just stuck in monster boxes somewhere. So whenever I get big lots of these, I send in every single one. Don't even look at them so long as the corners look good. And the corners and edges, for the most part, on update look great. Top Series 1, Top Series 2 cut bad. That's why the Top Series 2 uh, Shohei Otani numbered 700 uh, is, I think, the best card out there because it's the most difficult to grade, especially... Um, you know, the pitching very version, the SPs are also difficult grades too. maybe a little bit easier than number 700, just because number 700 has dark corners, just do the photography. Um, the other ones are lighter, I think. Um, and they kind of blend in any, any blemishes. So geez, how many of these do I got? Uh, this is not the last cards that we have in here. Um, there are more, I think there's actually a really good one. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is the order that has a good one. Well, tower don't fall. Ooh. Okay, last batch. We're coming down to the wire. Ah, oh, this is not the order that has it. I've got another order in route that I'm hoping to show you all. Dang it, this is not the order that has it. But this does have some good Rokis. Speaking of Roki, oh man. Roki! Tops Chrome. This is the first Tops Chrome I sent in and it came back a PSA 9. No bueno. Uh, next one, this is the first refractor I sent in and it came back a PSA 10. So out of both of those, I'd rather have the refractor come back, come back a PSA 10. Future Shohei Otani um, teammate. Future, uh, I would say, um, uh, best pitcher. Why am I blanking on the Cy Young Award winner? Oof, geez. Future Cy Young Award winner for sure. And then we're looking at his base tops. So PSA 10, PSA 10, PSA 10. PSA 10. So you all think that the Yamamoto craze is going to go well. Roki's better. Roki is way better. Way younger. Way better. Way faster. Just better. All right. Last but not least. The Caboose. Mike Trout. Albert Pujols. Shohei Otane. Uh, I was hoping that one of these would come back. PS, or this one would come back at 10. Um, these don't come up as often as the Ruth o Otani. Because I think that the print run on that was more. Because it's more desirable card. Again, due to the combination. I thought this would be cool because, there's, again, there's not many Otani Trout cards. as is why I bought those Tops Duels. There's definitely not many of all three together as rookies. He does have a couple rookie autographs that are like that, but not many base cards or insert cards that have all three. So um, three potential top ten all-time players on one card, and one of them is the rookie card. I think that's really, really cool. And they're all on the same team together, and they all sucked. <laughs> Well, they all didn't suck, but it was Otani's rookie year. Trout was Trout, and Pujols was... He was like, I don't know, 50 at that point. Okay, I do want to take a look at the just the stats on this really quick before I end. Cost of goods sold. So this is not a, a super profitable order. Again, we're looking at 106 cards. You can see my cost of goods sold, so just less than uh, 6000 Grading expense is $2,082.25. I uh, haven't sold anything, obviously, and then I'm expecting to project right around $9,700. This is very conservative, but I think that's a very conservative estimate. So profit without or with fees, again, I need to change that, Seventeen thirty-three. So if you look at this, we have 106 cards here. Uh, I spent about $19 to get them graded. On a per card basis, I may generate roughly $15, $16, $17 maybe $17 per card. So this is, kind of goes back to a ratio that I was sharing previously. This is how competitive grading has gotten, or at least how much value PSA is not able to give back relative to the fees that they are taking at $19 per card. You give them $19 per card. Um, they will give you a card back in their PSA case that you can then sell at a profit for roughly, on average, $15, $16, $17 dollars per card. So I'm paying PSA more, to, more money per card to grade my cards, and they get to make money really quick, instantaneous, regardless of the grade. 
I have to struggle to sell these things at roughly fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollars profit per card. So they're getting, they're winning that that ratio. So that ratio is less than one one to one. So I, that's not great. Whenever you look in twenty twenty and twenty nineteen, that ratio was closer to between eight and twelve. So you know, if I give PSA basically ten dollars, they give me back a card that I can sell for one hundred twenty profit. Um, in 2017, 2018, that ratio, again, this is before the, the boom that, you know, if you want to say that those were boom years and don't count, which I agree with 2017, 2018, that ratio is closer to about three and a half to four. So basically if I give PSA $10, I get a card that I can sell at a profit on average for 35 to 40. Again, that depends on card selection. It depends on your ability to grade. So, so I'm keeping the variable of me the same, my eyes, my what I want to buy, etc. Of course, the cards vary every single year. The quality of cards varies every single year. The players vary every single year, depending on their hype cycles, etc. So there's a lot of variables out there. But just with me, that number is something that I've been seeing erode over time but based on the quantity of cards that are being made now. PSA's prices, because if you begin changing these fee structures, you know, that skews more favorably on the submitter side, but there's just way too many people out there submitting to PSA for them to lower their prices, which is very unfortunate. Think that um, in order for this to be, you know, I think a, a more sustainable model is if you knock this thing down to 15. So let's just hypothetically do that really quick and say equals 106 times times 15. Watch the profitability number. We go from 1733 and the ROI of 2172. That jumps up to 2225. Uh, ROI jumps up to 29%. Um, let's go control Z. So the, R, the ROI jumped up 8% and the profitability jumped up $500. So the, it's you know, an 8%. So your profitability jumped up 25% over your ROI jumped 25% essentially from 21 to 29, 28, 29. So, or maybe it's 33% uh, jump big. That's a big difference. And of course that's at $15 you know, in 2018, 2019, you know, submission fees were less than $15. They were eight, 10, 12, um, sometimes you catch some specials lower than that. So it was much easier to, to generate profit just to quantify what that looks like. So 106 times, let's call it $10. <laughs> I mean, this is what it was like So to submit cards back then. It's all dependent on PSA's prices. So at $10 per card, if I could have gotten a $10 price rate, the ROI of this order would jump all the way up to $39.60 or 39 39.6% profitability of $2,755. Huge. And then just imagine stacking that over and over and over. So it's not nearly as profitable. Um, but again, these are conservative estimates, but which is why it's very competitive. PSA is getting a lot of business right now. So it's very, very, very important to you know vet your cards appropriately, etc. So um, hopefully that gives some insight into how the price at PSA plays a role in grading. Um, which is why I'm not a fan of just saying, hey, submit everything anymore. It used to be, a, I said, submit everything. Don't do that. You're basically clogging the lines and you're giving PSA no incentive to lower prices. 15 needs to be the standard. And then less than 15 uh, needs to be the special prices, in my opinion. Because um, this is still a lot of work to get basically $1,700 in profit. Yeah, it's 106 cards. I can set snipes all day and get 100 cards, clean them. I mean, it's basically a weekend, you know, of work. You could imagine that being essentially a weekend of work, um, which is not bad in a weekend of work getting 1700 bucks, but you know, it's not nearly as good as it used to be. You really got to grind at this to turn that into, you know, a sustainable thing where you can generate, you know, six figures in a year, um, which was something that was very feasible and it's still feasible, but now you really got to grind at it as a side hustle to get it to six figures. So hopefully that provides some background into the profitability and the pressures of PSA pricing. All right, let me know what you all think down below and we'll see you next time.